I'm Robert, the co-founder of Gene Light Therapeutics, and we do gene therapy beyond the mucus. As Peter mentioned, we are entering a new era of medicine, where your entire genome can be sequenced for under $1,000, where cells can be taken from your body and reprogrammed to kill cancer, where animal genes can be edited to do whatever we would like them to do. Yet what you find for the diseases that are listed on the screen, and such as colon cancer and Crohn's disease, that the only current treatment options are to address the symptoms, such as inflammation, or terrible therapies, such as life-changing surgery, or chemotherapy. These diseases are genetic, or driven by genetic risks, yet we are still managing the symptoms. Let's zoom into one particular disease that we were really taken aback when we started the company, familial edematous polyposis, FAP for short. A mutation in a single gene causes a 100% chance of colon cancer by the age of 40. In their teens, these patients will have their colon and rectum removed because they have no real drug options. They get an ileostomy bag, they still end up in the hospital because of nutritional deficiencies, and despite all of this, they have an uncomfortably high chance of small intestinal cancer. In the 21st century, we could not reconcile that the only option for these patients was to remove an entire organ. And here's a real kicker. We know that replacing or restoring the gene that is mutated in these patients can completely regress the disease. But the challenge has been how do you deliver the healthy copy of the gene to the cells that are actually responsible for it? This is your colon lining. It lines your entire colon and is responsible for absorbing nutrients and protecting your body from the food and toxins you eat. The cells in green are called your stem cells. They replenish your entire lining every four days. So for any mutation in the intestine to sustain, it has to occur in these stem cells. And they're heavily protected by the mucus. In an FAP patient, the stem cell has gotten a mutation. And now it's shown in red. That mutation will result in an overgrowth called a polyp. The polyp will eventually turn into colon cancer. So for any therapy for FAP to exist, or any gene therapy for it to exist, you must be able to deliver the healthy copy of the gene to those stem cells. And in order for you to do that, you must be able to penetrate that mucosal barrier. In fact, the mucus's entire job, or its main job, is to protect those cells from the toxins in your environment and the junk that you're eating. As it turns out, there are viruses, such as the polio virus, which are able to penetrate the mucus and deliver their biological cargo into the underlying cells. My co-founder and I came with a virology background, and we took our learnings from these viruses and we translated them into a non-viral system. To be clear, we created a non-viral system that can penetrate the mucus and deliver cargo to the underlying cells so that we can repeatedly dose these patients. Our vision for these patients is to replace surgeries, to replace chemotherapies, and to replace drugs and other diseases of the mucosal organs, which only address the symptoms with a daily gene therapy pill that actually addresses the cause. In order to show that we are able to reach the intestinal stem cells, we took fresh pig intestines and we dropped our delivery system on top of it. And we were able to show that at 100 minutes, we were able to get most of the delivery system to the bottom of these intestines where these stem cells reside. We then took animal models for FAP, which very closely resembled a human condition. And we did one of the first gene therapy attempts for FAP by delivering the healthy copy of the gene in our delivery system. And we were able to validate the, our mechanism by showing a 25% reduction in polyp size. Whereas in the controls, we saw no reduction or actually increase in polyp growth. We are now using this data to plug into our platform, which is designed to be very tunable so to, that we can increase our efficiency and reach the clinical efficacy that we desire. FAP is our first indication, but it is not our only one. The mucosal organs represent a large market size. And the size that you're seeing on here is only for the GI tract and the respiratory system. You have the cervix and the eyes and other organs that also are protected by the mucus. We are looking into Crohn's disease and another inherited form of colon cancer as our second and third targets. And we have uh, assets that we have characterized for them. Our IP is owned entirely by Dienolite. And we have provisionals that protect our ability to penetrate the cells and the mucus at the same time. 
My, uh, I did my uh, master's in chemical engineering at UC Berkeley, and I did research at Caltech before that. My co-founder, Tim, is finishing his PhD in gene therapy here at Berkeley. We have been part of Citrus and IndieBio, which uh, allowed us to get, make our prototype and test it in animals and build our platform as well. We have advisors who have worked closely with patients as their doctors and patient advocates who have developed animal models for FAP and other gastroenterology diseases and who are pioneers in GI gene therapy. We have signed a term sheet for 1.25 million and, uh, which will let us optimize our first lead. At that point, we will raise our Series A to go into humans. DNLite is interested in talking to investors, scientists, and doctors who would like to bring forth a new era of medicine. Thank you so much for your time.